families that now have been dealt a, a, an unspeakable tragedy in, a, in the blink of an eye. That's right, and it, it does get better in time, but certainly you never forget. Uh, it, it is uh, incredibly tragic, mind-boggling when you consider the, the miracle on the Hudson just a couple of weeks ago, guys. Good morning, everybody. Uh, 49 people killed. Families are just coming to grips with what happened, and for some, the shock will stay with them for some time. There is no way to explain the sadness. Just listen to the story of Beverly Eckert. According to the Buffalo News, she was a passenger on Flight 3407. She was also a 9-11 widow. She lost her husband in the World Trade Center, and Eckert was actually traveling to Buffalo this weekend for what was supposed to be a celebration of what would have been her husband's 58th birthday. In fact, she even planned to take part in the presentation of a scholarship award that she established in her husband's honor. Family members told the Buffalo News, quote, we know she was on that plane, and now she's with him. Elise Kausner was also a passenger on flight 3407. She was actually on her way home from law school in Jacksonville, Florida. Her brother Chris first heard the news on the radio. He called his parents immediately, and then he talked to reporters. Take a listen. My parents are on vacation in Florida, and I had to call down there and tell my father what was going on. And um, I, I, I'm just thinking about my mom. How are they taking it? Um, to tell you the truth, I heard my mother make a noise on the phone that I've never heard before. My uh, other sister, Laura, was waiting at the airport. I heard on the radio that there had been a crash, so I called immediately to see if the plane had landed at the airport or not. And um, initially, she thought that it had, but it turns out that that is not the case. Right now, I'm thinking the worst. And I'm thinking about the fact that my mother has to fly home from Florida and what I'm going to tell my two sons. That's what I'm thinking. Unspeakable. Uh, really, so many eyewitness accounts coming into CNN as well. So many coming in just this morning. Uh, Mary Jane Luce talked to us earlier this morning. She told us what she saw and heard in the moments after the crash. We heard this huge explosion and the house shook. So we ran toward our back windows, uh, which look out toward the house that was hit and we could see flames rising high into the sky. And so we grabbed our coats and ran outside to get a better view because there's a building partially blocking the view and went over onto the side street and you could see that uh, there, well, you almost couldn't see because of, of the flames and the smoke. There was so much that uh, it appeared that the house that was there was totally gone already. So far, there's no indication uh, of what could have brought down the plane. Uh, a moment ago, a Buffalo News staff photographer, Harry Skull Jr., who lives in Clarence Center, said he was not surprised that this crash occurred. My house sits right where the flight plane is, mm -hmm. and once darkness occurs every night, the planes get lower and lower and lower and lower, where they're just they're not too far top, above the top of the trees. And I've discussed it with neighbors out here, and uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I've run through my mind hundreds of times, if and when this happens, how I'm going to handle it. So startling to hear that. And, John, I know you talked to him a couple of times in the past couple of hours, and, and you asked him the impact on the community, mm -hmm. and he said uh, everlasting. You know, I just did a quick Google search. Clarence Center is a community of just 1,700 people. 1,743, I think, was the exact number that I saw um, in the first result. But uh, just incredible, and, and by all accounts, a very close-knit community. And certainly this is not um, anything that they will forget anytime soon. No, I mean, you always remember where the plane crash happened. Absolutely. You remember and, where and you were, when, and you always remember where it happened. And remarkable that that plane, uh, the fuselage, as we've been saying, really is on top yeah. of the footprint, you know, a footprint of just that one house, and it could have been, as tragic as this was, it could have been so much worse. It could have really uh, brought down so much of that Oh, that sure, yeah. If it, if it came know, in so at a shallow angle and kind of skipped along the ground, it could have taken out two or three homes. In I, incredible. I think that really yeah. speaks to sort of the trajectory that it came in at, you know, really nose-down attitude and just about straight down into the earth. Right. Almost vertical, probably. Yeah. yeah you know, and, and obviously the NTSB investigators are going to be looking into whether or not there was a total loss of lift on those wings, which would basically turn the aircraft into a stone and just mm -hmm. let it drop like a rock. It'll be a lengthy investigation, I'm sure. Uh, it certainly will, and the team will be getting there probably in about 40 minutes or so. Uh, we want to talk with somebody.